What's going on everyone? So a ton of you enjoyed the dismantling boba yellow video that I put out the other day with Cad Bane Green. So I figured I'd dive into the tank and well, do a similar video with maybe a different leader. Again, not the meta leaders like Sabine, Boba, Han, like New Han, that type of stuff. Cause we already know those decks are good, but instead maybe something that's a little bit under the radar to defeat Sabine Green, which is probably the biggest boogeyman of the format. Yes, Boba Yellow is amazing, but there are just so many ways to die so quickly against Sabine Green, especially with the fact that they've got Wreckers in Pose. Now, this deck doesn't necessarily dismantle Sabine Green as easily as Cad Bane did the Boba Yellow, but that's also because we are not just building for explicitly Sabine Green. This deck just happens to do some nice things against Sabine Green and have some game against it, but it also is trying to beat other decks too. We're not just, okay, put in every card I can against Sabine Green and just be her. So keep that in mind as we're going through. We might also test up against some Boba Yellow as well, if I can find some people to play it for us um, in this video. So before we get started, I have to mention, I have a TCG link in the description down below. Go ahead and check that out if you want to pick up any other cards. And I also have another announcement to make. I recently started a Patreon. I am planning on doing some viewer games over the weekend and set up some kind of roundtable discussions if you guys want to sign up for that um, and maybe get access to the exclusive Patreon server. Go ahead and check it out in the description down below. We can chat, we can do some viewer games, and who knows, maybe I might record some of them for you you all for the channel let's talk about bosk so bosk has this action to exhaust boss deal one damage to a unit with a bounty now this is actually really really powerful probably our best turn one option just to give you an example of what the versatility of this card is is going turn one stolen land speeder plus bounty hunters quarry because the stolen land speeder goes over to our opponent's side and then regardless if we have bounty hunters quarry or not we can actually just deal one damage to the stolen land speeder and then the following turn, we can deal another damage, which we essentially get, uh, we essentially get a 4-3 for one resource. Now, our opponent can actually deal some damage back with it. So in some cases, it's actually not that great against Sabine. But again, we're not just building for Sabine, and we can always resource it against Sabine if we need to, but it can be worth it if we get the Bounty Hunter's Quarry on it, because that's going to allow us to go ahead and claim that bounty alongside stolen land speeder which is a pretty insane turn but this also works you know anytime you're putting bounties on anything just getting some extra damage it can clear things off like wing leader or even in boba yellow's case like get rid of shields kill gritos etc he flips for five resources which is important because we want an early flip especially against the kind of meta aggro tempo decks as a four six so reasonable stat line and we could double claim bounties once per turn if bosk is on the field this works exceptionally well with Bounty Hunter's Quarry, but also works well against, uh, with Price on your head. And if your opponent's playing any Bounty cards, it also works well. But these are our kind of main Bounties that we're running. We don't want to go super heavy on the Bounty because then our kind of deck doesn't work properly. But there's also a really important synergy that I want to mention before we even talk about on the rest of the deck is the Client plus Bounty Hunter's Quarry. So the Client, you might notice, it's a blue card. It would cost five in our deck. But Bounty Hunter's Quarry oftentimes will be able to search, you know, top 10 cards since they're playing things like Sabine Wren or, you know, if our opponent's playing Greedo since they're unique units. You can search the top 10 cards of your deck and play a unit that costs three or less for free. The client costs three or less. There's oftentimes where we're going to be able to Bounty Hunter's Quarry into the client, allowing us to choose a unit and put a bounty that heals five damage from our base. This is one of the best ways against any deck, really, because we can just continuously apply bounties. And with boss gets a heal 10 which is really crazy and again we don't need to pay for the kind of um penalty on aspects with the vigilance aspect because we're playing it for free off of bounty hunters quarry which is really really important so a really nice synergy there but that's not the entire deck with the bounties and such we also got some kind of cards to along the curve and some removal in our earlier stages of the game as i said we had the stolen land speeder but we also have Stormtrooper and Salacious Crumb. It's really nice to play a bunch of one drops alongside Bounty Hunter's Quarry and Stolen Land Speeder. So you can go Stolen Land Speeder plus Discharge Stormtrooper, for example, or Crumb. We have in our two drop slots, Kylo Silencer, no other two drop. Silencer, early space unit, really important against any deck that's going into space. Yellow Tarkins, Sabine Green. If they go A Wing, Silencer just kills it and survives. Star Viper, 
I decided to go with Star Viper over something, you know, like Punishing One, even though Punishing One can be nice and ready up again against the bounties. Star Viper is just such a valuable play to restore some additional HP, and ECL Star Viper is so, so massively important against so many different decks. And then the client, as I mentioned, not really going to be played all that often. It's mainly for the Bounty Hunter's Quarry Synergy. Phase 3 Dark Trooper and Super Laser Tech in our 3-drop slot. Phase 3 Dark Trooper, nice Sentinel. Super Laser Technician uh, also just helps us ramp, get to boss, get turn early. Escort Skiff, lots of really powerful 3-drop green units. Star Viper, Dark Trooper, Super Laser Tech. Very often, this is going to have Ambush. And Imperial Interceptor, this can be really powerful against Sabine. If they go like Red 3 A-Wing, you can ECL out an Interceptor and kill both, which is insane, and have this live. Rook at a 5-drop slot. This is also important because it's another ECL target that kills basically anything. K2 gets killed, Rook lives, um, you know, any mana of 2 or 3 drops. And then we also have our top end in Darth Vader and Reinforcement Walker. Darth Vader, just a nice little finisher, and Reinforcement Walker helps us heal, and a nice finisher as well. If you wanted to, you could play Crate Dragons, but to be honest, if you're against the meta, like Boba Yellow and Sabine Green, Crate Dragons are not necessarily that relevant. So it's more of a sideboard card to me, and you definitely should put it in your sideboard because it's really good against the mid range and, and more ramp heavy slash longer games. But we also have a few events to talk about and upgrades alongside the Bounty Hunter's Quarry. Um, we also have Death Mark and Price on your head, helps us ramp, gives us another bounty option. In terms of events, we have Force Chokes and open fires these help us kill boba fett's and sabines when they come down and just kill off some early game units and claim some bounties if you want to and then overwhelming barrage this is really nice in a deck that has a leader that deploys on five because you put it on boss and you hit for six which is really powerful and you often will be able to allow or uh, have boss in the battlefield since he's a high toughness unit i don't like it as much in decks that have a six to deploy leader because it's kind of like an odd mana cost. You have one left over. But in the boss deck, it's also really nice because you can claim some bounties. So that's going to be the list, guys. We're going to dive into some games against the meta decks, specifically Sabine Green today, just to show you kind of that matchup, but also some hopefully Boba Yellows and maybe some other meta matchups. Let's dive into it. Into our first matchup against, well, Sabine Green. This seems like an okay hand. We're going to try this out. I'm not a huge fan of it, but the idea here is... I'm going to go Bounty Hunter's Quarry turn one, um, and then into an open fire turn two. So I'm going to go to resource, uh, super laser tech, and an open fire. Force choke, as I mentioned earlier, really nice against the Sabine leader. We're going to pass. And the way this goes poorly is that they have like a Ketsu Onyo. And if they do that, then we might just have to force choke. Um, but looks like they don't. So we're going to go on Bounty Hunter's Quarry. And if they decide to deal a damage with Sabine, we're just going to claim initiative so we can open fire immediately. If they, well, claim initiative themselves, then we can just deal damage with Bosk. But this ended up working out quite nicely. And we get to remove their units. Got a double Rook. Uh, not necessarily extremely relevant in this spot, uh, but we'll come up a little bit later. And now we get to go ahead and kill their Battlefield Marine. And then we get to look at the top five. And look at that. We got ourselves a Phase 3 Dark Trooper. So we killed their units, and we got a Dark Trooper. It's as if we just kind of had a really nice couple of plays here. Wow, they're going for a cause on turn two. I wonder if they had like a wing leader and a for a cause and they decided not to play wing leader because their battlefield marine died. That is very plausible. But I mean, this is a very, very nice start for us um, for the most part. One of the best cards we could have hit off of that bounty hunter's quarry would be something like a client. As I mentioned earlier, client is like exceptionally powerful. We're just going to claim initiative. They're going to deal another damage to us with Sabine. And we're going to hope that this phase three dark trooper can prevent a decent amount of damage hopefully we draw something pretty good here double force choke could be reasonable i think i'm happy enough resourcing the death star stormtrooper and keeping my powerful five drops here and then just going like force choke force choke uh, and just removing all of their units here so attack for three with the phase three dark trooper let's see if they ecl something out if they do like a k2 um i'm not that excited about force choking it i think i might just let it go we'll see of course so they just straight up play a k2 if they ecl it out i'm honestly not that afraid because then they can't ecl po Dameron's and wreckers later on they are going to ecl out a k2 they're gonna hit us for four one here um and i guess we'll just pass 
Okay, they're gonna claim initiative. That's honestly totally fine for us. Um, I think our opponent, like, yeah, we don't get to use resources, but realistically, like we are in a pretty nice spot here with the boss flip, and then we have overwhelming barrage, and we have Rook to ECL out here so we can kill Poe Dameron's. Like we have a lot of different options and getting to our leader at the same time that they get to their leader is pretty advantageous for ourselves. They're gonna go ahead and deal damage with Sabine. We're gonna go ahead and flip Bosk. And unfortunately for us, we don't have any like Bounty Hunters quarries or Price on Your Head so that we can accelerate into Reinforcement Walker. If we had a Price on Your Head, it's one of the reasons why this card's so good is we place a Price on Your Head and then we get to play Reinforcement Walker next turn, which is pretty crazy. We have so many different opportunities and please hit my Bosk. Yes, I am very, 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 very happy about that, to be honest. Um, here, I'm just going to ECL out a Rook and kill their Fleet Lieutenant just to make a play. But them not hitting my base for six and then also another three points of damage is exceptionally exciting for me. They're going to go ahead and get down a Sabine. And we have options here. We have many, many, many options. Our options. Let's go ahead and get rid of this Silencer. And I think we're going to start off with probably just a Overwing Barrage. They could have like a Poe, uh, which would be pretty nice for them. Or a Wrecker, to be honest. But we're going to go Overwhelming Barrage, hit the A-Wing, and hit the Sabine. So we're going to go 2 damage here, and then 3 damage to the A-Wing. And we will see what our opponent's got. Wrecker would be decent, uh, but not that great because it can't kill. Um, let's just go ahead and kill Sabine. Now it can kill. And we're just going to claim initiative. Fighters for Freedom just dies to us. They have another four of cause. Okay. I mean, they, they have gotten a lot of really nice ones here. That is a Darth Vader. So I think here we're just going to have to go Darth Vader and hope that we hit a client. This is also another reason why client is amazing. But double four of cause, you know, that's those are the cards that are really scary. So Darth Vader, we got a client. Awesome. That's exactly what we want. We're going to ambush, kill the Fighters for Freedom. Now, if they have a Poe or if they have a, um, a Cassian to ready up, they have like a Wrecker, then, you know, we can deal with it. We're going to pass. They did a damage here because they are interested in probably playing a Cassian or a Poe or something like that. Yep, that's a Poe. We're going to kill Poe. And... They're going to claim initiative and hopefully they don't have another four of cause. That's where we really end up losing. <laughs> um, can't really do too much about that, but we probably could resource this super laser technician and then just get down a reinforcement walker. These games are close. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. These games are very, very close, but um, we can win. We can win. And the client was a really nice hit. The only thing we have to avoid is another four of cause. Triple four cost could just be really, really tough for, for us to deal with. Let's go bounty on the battlefield marine. And this is where the client really starts to show its colors because we're going to be able to heal five after we kill this thing. And depending on what they play, if they go like space unit and whatnot, um, we can do some work there by Imperial Interceptoring. Ah, they have a Poe Dameron, huh? Ooh, now that is tricky business huh so we get to kill and they can hit us for eight but we heal down to 17 and then we play a reinforcement walker technically that allows us to live so that's what we have to do so double poe double four a cause no wreckers yet let's go reinforcement walker heal up another three and then pass probably get rid of this star viper since we are not really going to have the initiative at this point so they can deal eight to us, but that's not quite enough to finish out the game. If they have a fleet lieutenant, that doesn't deal extra damage. So we are kind of in a decent spot here and we can play another reinforcement walker, which is pretty nice. Okay. They're gonna attack Darth Vader. No, 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 that, that's definitely not. If they attack Darth Vader, the game is over for them. If they hit our base and discard a card, then 
they will be able to go ahead and, and potentially kill us right if they have like a if they have another couple of amazing draw uh cards here but i mean we're kind of closing out the game now because we have reinforcement walker we can just attack with uh and again this is why we play reinforcement walkers are oh, they're gonna defeat the client uh can't defeat so normally you can't you can't defeat an upgrade if you don't discard um but it's a little bit of a bug on Karabas, so our client should have had a shield still. And we're going to kill Poe Dameron here, claim another bounty. Uh, don't need to draw anything, just heal up for a million. Now we're down to 6 HP, and now we are in a much, much better spot than we were before. Wrecker comes down. They're going to defeat something, and uh, we could play just another Reinforcement Walker. The reinforcement walker comes down we'll draw the bounty hunters quarry we're at the stage where we can actually afford to draw and they're most likely going to oh wow they damaged with the sabine mm -mm. i am i'm very happy about that let's go ahead and probably resource this price on your head force chokes looking no not quite uh let's just discard this card skiff um they, they really need to be hitting our base. This, like, attrition game against my Reinforcement Walkers really puts them in a very bad spot. Um, let's go Bounty Hunter's Quarry over on the A-Wing, and then we can put a bounty on it afterwards with the client. A secondary Wrecker. So, yeah, they're drawing all their top, and they have double po double Wrecker, double four cause. So they're able to get through some of these cards, but it's going to be a little tricky for them. And see, they hit the client, but that's okay, because we're going to go Imperial Interceptor, kill this, and then we get another client. Um, which is awesome. And then we can go Death Star Stormtrooper. Stolen Land Speeder. And then we'll deal a damage to it. And then we can Force Choke. I don't think that's necessary. Ooh, Overlaying Barrage is pretty nice. Force Choke gets a lot less valuable in this stage of the game when they have all these resources and they can draw into like Pose, Wreckers, things like that. But our opponent's like just running out of options. Like we are going into a long game. This client, the Reinforcement Walker, has drawn out the game. Even though, um, you know, this is one of the problems with Sabine Green, which is why it's so strong now, is because they have so much late, mid game to late game. Like it still doesn't feel like we are completely out of the woods. Now, I don't think we're going to lose this game, but it still doesn't feel like we are completely out of the woods. Now, what they can do here is um kill my reinforcement walker with a stolen land speeder oh they're gonna hit uh the base i think in this spot they probably should have because we can get the stolen land speeder back i mean they're just in a bad spot now if they're they're kind of doing um they like they hit my units and then they hit the base if they had gone all into the base maybe we would have been in a little bit more trouble but a bounty on the stolen land speeder and then we can go ahead and ping it with the uh bosk and then we'll play the stolen land speeder and we can overwhelming brush here for sure just deal six to everything or five to everything or split as you can see the client just does so much work here like the client has healed us for what 15 20 hp reinforcement walkers have healed us for like nine and that's going to be the game you can see the game time was really long, which is kind of surprising, but you need healing if you're going to go up against Sabine Green. It's like impossible to beat this deck without healing. And uh, this was not like a weak draw from our opponent necessarily. In the earlier game, if they had like a wing leader, which it seemed like they did, then we kind of messed them up in the earlier stages by killing their Battlefield Marine. Uh, maybe they could have played the early game a little bit differently by, you know, just claiming initiative, getting in for three, which is usually what you want to do when your opponent puts a bounty on something and maybe they didn't have anything they just got a four cause early off um but honestly we had the imperial interceptor so if they played a space unit that would have been pretty bad for them early on i don't know but they definitely drew into double po double wrecker which kind of brought them back a little bit in the later stages of the game it was a little bit reasonable we definitely got there not sure if that was like the best sabine green hand um i definitely think they stumbled a little bit in the early game and they brought it back a little bit in the mid game so we'll see on to the next one. All right. I know I was trying to get the Sabine Green matchups, but uh, I can only ask so much. And I figured it's a Han Red. This seems like a reasonable one to test against. It's an aggro deck. It's going to have kind of a similar strategy as to Sabine Green. And they're going to try to flush, the, uh, you know, flood the board, 
hit us with some burn spells. So it's also a top eight contender in the last tournament. So I figure this is a good matchup to test against, even though we're going to try to get some more Sabine Greens here. Um, Super Laser Tech, kind of whatever. Phase 3 Dark Trooper, looking pretty good. They're going to Daring Raid to start off, huh? All right, well, let's just go with a Death Star Stormtrooper and probably a Stolen Land Speeder here. Yeah, let's go Stolen Land Speeder. And now, um, now what they can do is kill my Death Star Stormtrooper. But starting out with a Daring Raid is a very weak hand from our opponent. You really don't want to be using only one resource on turn one as Han Red. They can play a three resource play or below on turn one. So just seeing a Daring Raid is 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 very weak very very weak that's definitely a mulligan from our opponent um in, in most games here i actually do want the phase three or uh the super laser attack because of our opponent's start they want to hit the dust star stormtrooper that is totally fine um we're just going to play out a super laser attack and we're going to see what our opponent's got um they're going to play an a-wing we're just going to go ahead and kill our stolen land speeder and then get ourselves a stolen land speeder and if they have no other play here, then that's fine. If they do, then we can kill it with the Death Star Stormtrooper. But it looks like they do not. And there is Star Vipers. Love that. Love me some Star Vipers. Would love to kill something with a Super Laser Tech. Oh. Interesting. They're going to go Wing Leader, huh? Let's attack with a Stolen Land Speeder. Let's attack with a Death Star Stormtrooper. And let's just put a death mark on the wing leader and hope that we can draw into like a crumb. Oh, price on your head's actually pretty reasonable. Put a price on your head over on A wing and then pass. There's a bounty hunter's quarry. There's an interceptor that we got. Interceptor ECL that actually kills off the A wing, which is pretty nice. Wing leader, huh? Maybe that was their only turn one play is play wing leader, which. Obviously it doesn't work because it kills itself. It doesn't have any targets with the experience on. Opponent has disconnected. All right. Well, I guess they didn't draw on anything good. All right. I, I, I usually title these games because I'm looking for Sabine Green players, but this guy joined <laughs> and then just left the game before the game even finished. Come on, man. Uh, anyways, I think we had a good chance of winning this game. It wasn't wrapped up completely. Oh, they reconnected. I take it back. I take it all back. They reconnected. Woo. We're in. We're in. They reconnected. Okay. I was a little worried for a second there. I was like, come on, don't disconnect on me. I feel like you still got a pretty good chance of winning this game. <laughs> We're not out of the woods yet. The uh, ideal card I would want to get is a client off this Bounty Hunter's Quarry. But we're going to resource here, probably get a resource, the Escort Skiff. Um, I'm interested in keeping around a Starfighter just in case. Oh, they disconnected again. All right. Oh, they reconnected. All right. <laughs> I don't know what's going on over there. Some sort of internet troubles, I assume. <laughs> they're gonna hit for five we are just going to flip bosk actually and we're gonna see kind of what happens here we have a lot of things to deal with the han they could play a wild rancor here they have a covetous rivals okay so covetous rivals not really that scary They get to hit the stolen land speeder for two. Um, in this spot, I am interested in probably just bounty hunters quarrying the A wing. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to ECL out the Imperial Interceptor regardless. And we're going to be able to hit their Han with super laser tech plus still. Oh, they're not even. Okay, they're not even going to bother. All right, well, let's ECL out the Imperial Interceptor. Trade. And I do not want to collect the price on your head again, but I do want to collect the Bounty Hunter's Quarry. Again, the reason why is we can play Darth Vader next turn anyways. So there's not really a reason to double claim the ramp unless we wanted to play Reinforcement Walker, but we already have a good play. So I'd rather just kind of flood the board, get some Sentinels up, things like that. Han can play Chaos of Wars and things like that type of burn with Daring Raid as well, but we should be out of the woods because they don't have ECL or anything. Waiting for our opponent to pick an ability. Okay, we get a crumb. That seems pretty good. And then we get a Death Star Stormtrooper. All right, cool. 
And now we kill their covetous rivals. We attack, we attack, and we attack. And I mean, we are miles ahead at this point. Miles, 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 miles ahead. There's not really anything our opponent could do. I mean, they could have a wild rancor. I talked about that earlier, which would wipe almost everything off the board. Um, but that isn't quite good enough. Not quite good enough. They play a wild rancor, becomes a six eight. We attack in with Bosk, and then we can claim initiative. Or, well, they would have to claim initiative because then we could just kill them with Bosk. So then they can kill Bosk. They're going to daring raid what? The stolen land speeder. Okay, we're going to attack in for three. They don't have a wild rancor, otherwise they would have played it. Wild rancor is like the scary card in this deck generally speaking also pose and and records can, can can be in but that's not nearly as scary when you don't have ecl they're gonna play han i imagine let's attack in with the super laser attack just to guarantee the damage that boss can get in and it should be dead here trying to think of what they could have it could have like i don't know surprise strike off off aspect to kill my boss and then they live for another turn but then we just take initiative and we death star stormtrooper so they don't really have many options not many options all right gg uh definitely not as strong as sabine green in my opinion especially what we saw there like sabine green almost out absolutely overran us but also our opponent did not have a very good hand Maybe that would have changed things. Maybe it would have changed how we played the game for sure. But overall, I mean, they still did some damage to us. It wasn't like a complete breeze. But turn one, Daring Raid is very bad. Turn two, A-Wing, also pretty bad. Consider this. You could play K2 on turn two, and they just played an A-Wing on turn two. Uh, so very, very, very poor initial starting hand from our opponent. They, they kind of ramped up here with the Covetous Rivals and stuff. But even then... It wasn't like a wrecker or a Poe, which they could have played on those turns as well. Anyways, on to the next. We're going to look for Sabine Green for sure. Into our next matchup, and guess that? It's a Sabine Green. Awesome. Now, this hand is decent if they go into space. If they don't, then it's pretty poor. So I think I'm going to mulligan this and hope for a little bit of a better couple of options. And this is a lot better hand. I can resource this Darth Vader and one of these silencers, and I can go Death Star Stormtrooper, Bounty Hunter's Quarry. Um... And I think I'm going to ECL it out because the Rebel decks really, really... What? Um, oh, they claimed initiative, but um, they uh, they didn't mean to. We're going to ECL out a Death Star Stormtrooper, claim it, and then hopefully get a client. Yes. So client is awesome. Sabine Ren, and again, you get to search the top 10 cards of your deck, which is amazing. And now we have a really nice setup here. I think I'm going to resource this Silencer because we do have the open fire um, and they're going to deal one with Sabine. That's fine. I'm going to pass. And if they want to do nothing, that's totally fine. Yep. We're going to put a bounty on this fighters for freedom and we're going to open fire it. Just clear it off the board. And then we are kind of set here. Price on your head, Star Viper. Going to go and resource this price on your head. They could flip over a Sabine this turn. Let's go ahead and play an escort skiff. Not going to ambush because we don't have any green cards, but that's okay they have a sabine ren let's go ahead and put a bounty on it just so we can deal an extra damage with it uh with our boss against it let's deal damage to it and heroic resolve as well okay yeah i mean they going all they're all all in on the upgrades here this turn and yeah they're gonna do some damage but getting out an early client is massive it is really really disgusting and here what we can do is overlaying barrage hit sabine and hit wing leader and i'll deal one to wing leader and then five to sabine this prevents the the wing leader damage coming in and if they decide to attack with sabine what we can do is actually flip over okay they're gonna oh no i think that was a not necessarily a great play because i was actually not gonna flip bosk because I was afraid of an ECL Podamron to one-shot my Bosk. 
because by doing this they cannot actually do anything too crazy and we actually get to go ahead and kill sabine double claim the bounty so we heal 10 and hit them for six which is a pretty just ridiculous couple of plays that were just made <laughs> um as i said client is absurd this is one of the reasons and it's not unlikely because they play so many unique units on turn one that um we can very frequently they're gonna ecl wrecker okay they're gonna probably kill escort skiff and um kill bosk but that's okay because we can just kill wrecker with the client afterwards so not really that scared and now they have no ECL, which is really, really an important thing to keep in mind. And we can just, again, kill Wrecker. Yeah. So here we just attack Wrecker. Don't even lose the client. And we get to follow up with a phase three Dark Trooper. Not like an amazing play by us by any means, but it's, it's a reasonable one. It's a reasonable one for sure. And here, I think I'm just going to resource this price on your head. That is a Poe Dameron. Okay, so we can, we could do some stuff here. Let's see, we have stolen land speeder. I think what we do is just play out all of our units here. Because they're gonna have to attack, attack the phase three dark trooper this next turn. So we can attack into their base with the phase three dark trooper. We can attack into their base with the client. We play an Imperial interceptor and now they're going to have to attack the phase three dark trooper. I suppose they could discard a card to um, kill my super laser tech, but the client is still safe here and they don't have any way besides playing another wrecker here. But if they do that, then um, we just drop a reinforcement walker and that's a pretty good play. We are in definitely in a very, very good spot. I mean, the client has been absurd. We've healed 15 off this one client here. Or maybe it was just 10. Regardless, it's insane. Okay, so they had the third wrecker. Obviously, that was kind of the ideal situation for our opponent. But we're going to go ahead and put a bounty on Poe here. And the way this is going to work is we get to super laser tech plus escort skiff the Poe. Or we could just drop a reinforcement walker. But the reason why I'm putting the bounty on Poe is because there's a chance that they just want to um, attack the client. They're going to attack our base. And they're probably going to discard a card here. At least that's my guess. Yep. So let's go. Oh, they didn't discard a card. Let's attack with Poe. They're going to Metal Ceremony. Yeah, they can't metal ceremony Poe. So that was a mistake from them. It wouldn't have mattered anyways. I was attacking with Imperial Interceptor. Let's escort Skiff. Oh, that was a mistake from us. Oh, wow. Uh, that was a very big mistake from us. <laughs> that was a huge mistake from us um okay that might have just lost me the game so right there i should have played the escort skiff before attacking with super laser technician because it's obviously ambushed that was just a very very basic mistake from us i could have undid like our opponent undid but i mean uh i don't feel like i should that was just a straight up fat misplay for me here i mean we have to go darth vader hope for a super laser tech oh wait, whoops let's go darth vader and we're gonna play all three of the crumbs and we're gonna ambush hit the uh wrecker here but it doesn't matter yeah, that, this game would have been won if I had played it properly. If we undid, then I would have won. But that was just a misplay by me. We kill the Poe. We heal five there. So we don't take eight and we're five more HP. We have a Darth Vader or Reinforcement Walker to follow up. 
that was a very winnable game that was just a complete misplay by me and you know that happens sometimes I'm not gonna cut it out but we should have won that game almost certainly that was the last record they had they had already gone through a poe um we had the board state we literally had to survive one more turn that was 100 a win that was just me misplaying so don't misplay like me and you'll win this game against sabine green <laughs> on to the next into our next matchup against look at that sabine green i will say this is a non-ecl sabine green which is just not nearly like not even close to as good uh so we'll fight against this one but just keep that in mind as we're going through uh definitely significantly less scary to fight against non-ecl sabine greens but we have a pretty nice hand here we have uh death star stormtrooper death star stormtrooper and a star viper next turn if they activate the sabine ren we're just going to claim initiatives that we can trade with their sabine um i was going to play death star stormtrooper into death star stormtrooper but there's not really a need to and i think i'm just going to resource the other death star stormtrooper at this point um and we're going to kill their sabine that's a fighters for freedom let's just go ahead and drop in the super laser technician they're going to go ahead and deal a damage let's go ahead and claim initiative would love to see rook is pretty good here rook i, I do like rook here um i think i'm gonna resource the client at this point i don't really see myself playing it for five resources um the reason why rook is great is because i can kill or attack fighters for freedom and then ecl out of rook um let's let's ecl rook yeah um i think using the action on sabine doesn't make much sense here i think they should have attacked with the fighters for freedom they have a dark saber they do have a dark saber cool dark saber is pretty good we do have a way to deal with it though with the force choke and rook here they should have 100 percent hit the base there's like not even a discussion there they 100 percent hit the base rook doesn't kill um non-leader units on attacks so that was that was a, a massive massive mistake from our opponent they just missed out on not only six or six damage but also another seven damage because we couldn't kill the um the sabine on our turn we had to have attacked with rook first so that was that was just a huge mistake let's play a, a crumb let's flip bosk um let's just go ahead and and uh and hit the sadari peacekeeper because then we can kill it with crumb afterwards Overrun Barrage, pretty awesome. Death Star Stormtrooper, gonna be resourced. <laughs> um, definitely like our spot here, very much so. If you're gonna play Dark Saber and like the Sidari Peacekeeper type theme of of a Sabine, I generally don't like playing the X Wings, but that's just kind of like my my thought process. I like the Rebel, like the hardcore Rebel version. I think you can play X Wings in the, the hardcore Mando version. I think you want to steer away from X Wings and play just like the the, the really solid. Um, you know one and two and three plays on the ground instead because you're going to be going uh dark saber okay they're going to hit in okay yeah they didn't really have many options there i think i just bounce the um the salacious crumb to kill their sendari peacekeeper then kill their adelphi patrolling and their x-wing here with the overwhelming barrage and play a crumb yeah, I think I like that. Hit their X-Wing. Overwhelming Barrage this. Kill their Adelphi Patrol Wing. The reason why I'm doing this instead of the Darth Vader is one, I get to heal one from Crumb, get it back on the board. Two, I get to get in for more damage. Three, if they have another Adelphi Patrol Wing, they can't Adelphi Patrol Wing into Adelphi Patrol Wing and hit us for six, which would have been, you know, kind of a little bit more dangerous. I think I can resource this Super Laser Tech. Do want to be prepared for a Reinforcement Walker if we do get there. They could have Wreckers and Pose still, but their Wreckers and Pose are a lot weaker when you don't have ECL. So I'm not really scared of them, to be honest. Wrecker would be reasonable. Gorilla Attack Pod, huh? Uh, let's just play a Darth Vader here. Get a client. And let's hit the Gorilla Attack Pod. And then we bounce the Crumb to kill it. And then we get to replay the crumb. 
Yeah, this is like an older version or like a, one of the original versions before like Record and Poe came out with Gorilla Attack Pods, Adelphi Patrol Links, and that type of card. I think this is like a pretty weak version of Sabine Green. So I don't know if this is a fair interpretation of um, of what we got going on here. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll just put a bounty on Cassian and seal the deal. Like there's not really much. I think I put a dark saber on it, I guess. <laughs> so this is going to heal us for five and the game is like 100% over. We have double crumb so we can start cycling them and just getting a ton of healing every turn. Don't even need to have double crumb to do that, but then we get down to phase three dark trooper, a tie silencer and a salacious crumb. And we get to double claim the bounty. So we heal for 10. This is very over. You can see the difference like between the earlier Sabine Greens that we fought against and this version. Like this one wasn't even close. And it's not even that like they had terrible like cards on the early turns. It's just that the later game of the, of the deck was a lot weaker. Like they didn't have, they, uh, supposedly they don't have pose. They don't have records. They don't have ECL. And all three of those things make the deck like not scary at all. But when you add ECL, you add pose, you add records, you could see kind of the difference. Like this is just a perfect example of like this game. It's not that we had like an amazing draw necessarily or that our opponent played um, like terribly or anything like that necessarily. It's just that we are outclassing their deck. Like it's just that the cars that they're playing are so much weaker than the other Sabine Greens that we're playing against because they're playing like Adelphi Patrol Wings, Gorilla Attack Pods instead of Pose, Wreckers, and ECL. So pretty fun one. Rec uh, client did heal us for seven that game um, with boss double claim, but pretty straightforward. And let's move on to another one. Whoa, we got ourselves another Sabine Green matchup as I have been waiting for. This one, more traditional with the ECL. We got ourselves a reasonable hand. Uh, Bounty Hunter's Quarry, Salacious Crumb, not, not a bad start at all. I'm going to keep the Super Laser Tech and the Open Fire and resource this Vader and uh, Rook. Salacious Crumb, not really all that of an exciting turn one play, to be honest. But... You know, it does some things. And ideally, if we play this turn correctly, it will get that one HP heal. So we're going to start off by passing. And if they just deal one damage to each of us, I'll play a crumb. If they play a unit, I'll play Bounty Hunter's Quarry. And then they're going to deal one damage to each of us. Oh, now that is quite unfortunate. <laughs> um, hmm. Uh, okay, I am just going to play a crumb and I will not play the Bounty Hunter's Quarry. That is really, really quite sad for us, to be honest. Let's just go ahead and claim initiative here. Next turn, I think I'm gonna go Super Laser Tech ECL'd out to kill their Ketsu. Ketsu is one of the cards where, again, this is a card that just like does so much for all these games. I mean, we just can't even play our, our Bounty Hunter's Quarry in this spot because of Ketsu. But I'm gonna go ahead and ECL out something here. Um, and that's gonna be the super laser tech because what I can do is then play a Bounty Hunter's Quarry and also bounce the Salacious Crumb. So we're gonna go Bounty Hunter's Quarry on the Sundari Peacekeeper. Then I will go ahead and deal a damage. Oh, we're lagging. A little bit of lag here. Lag, 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 lag. Okay, deal damage eventually. Come on, Carabas, you got this. Deal of damage. <laughs> wow, you're lagging pretty hard here. Um, they're going to take initiative. We're going to go ahead and bounce the crumb to deal another damage. And then we will pass. So now we get to go ahead and get down to this Bosk. And we have so many different options. We can force choke the Sabine. We can open fire the Peacekeeper. Most likely, we're not going to do that. But what I am interested in doing is readying up the... Um, the boss here so that's what we're gonna do if they have like dark saber there is a very good chance that they could put the dark saber on the sadari peacekeeper but i'm not too worried about that to be honest dark saber on sadari peacekeeper is a pretty weak play for the most part let's see if they decide to attack boss no let's go ahead and kill the sadari peacekeeper double claim that bounty that's all i'm about and uh, we are going to double collect this bounty. 
And ideally, we hit a client. Awesome, we hit a client. And we hit a phase three dark trooper. Wow, great hits. Absolutely amazing. Client's going to help us out a ton. Um, now we get to force choke the Sabine. Boom. If they have a dark saber, they can't even put dark saber on this thing. <laughs> this is exactly how we want this game to go. This has kind of worked out perfectly for us. If they have a K2, we can open fire. Um, we can also just play crumb. That's fine as well. And it looks like they have a four cause. Four cause, they revealed deserter, disabling fang fighter, battlefield marine, and red three. And they just milled all of it. Makes sense to me. Um, they're going to be looking for podamarins, wreckers. They're going to be looking for um, more four causes, that type of card. Daring raid, deal two damage. Okay, we're going to going to be able to claim initiative here which is pretty excellent and we could double claim another bounty hunter's quarry next turn and uh double open fire i like to keep that i kind of want to keep this price on your head though so maybe i should resource one of these open fires no i think price in your head should be resourced this turn and we're just going to start off with an attack by the phase three dark trooper because they're going to have to attack the phase three dark trooper if they want to get past it so they could ecl a podamer in here if they don't ECL it out, we can... Okay, so here comes ECL. It's going to be ECL Podamron, almost assuredly. They might discard a card to get rid of a shield. They might discard a card to deal two damage to us. Regardless, this client is going to heal us for five. And I think I want to double claim the Bounty Hunter's Quarry over double claiming anything else. And remember, Open Fire is just going to be able to, you know, kill the Podamron on its own because they have to hit the... Um, Phase three dark trooper. We're gonna put a bounty on, on Poe. We are going to bounty hunters quarry the Poe Dameron. Then we are going to open fire the Poe Dameron. And I will not double claim the client, but I will double claim the bounty hunters quarry because I think we're in a spot where we're just gonna be the aggressors here. There's another client. I don't think we care about that. There is a silencer. I think I'm gonna take the silencer. And then next up, we have a Death Star Stormtrooper or Stolen Land Speeder. I feel like we could just take the Death Star Stormtrooper. Then I'm going to bounce the Crumb. And I'll deal damage to Bosk. It's not really relevant because Wrecker could kill him anyways. Um, I guess I should have done this before so that we wouldn't have dealt the damage to Bosk. But at the end of the day, I don't think it realistically will matter because Poe or Wrecker would have killed Bosk anyways. And if they don't kill Bosk with Wrecker, then we can double claim the bounty yet again with an overwhelming barrage on Death Star Stormtrooper and then the Salacious Crumb Bounce. And then we get to get down a Reinforcement Walker next turn. So this game is all but wrapped up. Uh, we just have to get through the next couple of uh, turns in terms of attacking, right? And they conceded. All right, so GG, very, very solid one. One of our better showings um, against uh, the Sabine. The other ones were pretty close. This one was not really close. The Bounty Hunter's Quarry was critical. Bounty Hunter's Quarry hitting a client. Again, you can see how the game changes when you hit a client. It just makes the game so much easier. And hitting the Phase 3 Dark Trooper definitely helped out. But that early ramp, the ECL on Katsuonia was also really good because we could claim those double claims um, with Bounty Hunter's Quarry. And then the Force Choke on Sabine definitely sealed the deal. My feeling is that they had a Dark Saber in hand. The way they played it makes me think they had a Dark Saber in hand. And by Force Choking Sabine, they couldn't get the Dark Saber down. And uh, that means that we kind of just easily took the win. On to the next one. All right, guys, you're not going to believe this, but uh, it's a Sabine Green. Who would have thought? Um, I am going to mulligan this one. Even though we have a double one drop here, these are not kind of the one drops I'm looking for. And we kind of have a weak hand afterwards. So I'm going to mulligan. And this is a much better hand. I get to resource this reinforcement walker and probably one of these Death Star Stormtroopers because um, I'd rather have the healing potential out of Crumb. And we get to go either Crumb plus Stormtrooper or Bounty Hunter's Quarry on turn one, which is going to be quite excellent. So let's go Death Star Stormtrooper. Let's put a Bounty Hunter's Quarry on this A-Wing. It is a little risky when they go A-Wing because they could have something like a um, Wing Leader to make it kind of out of range of our Bosk pings. Um, we could draw an open fire next turn. If we draw an open fire, that would probably be their best draw because if they have a Wing Leader, we still get to kill it and they don't get any damage in. So that would be awesome. Imperial Interceptor, that's a really nice one as well. 
and I think I'm going to resource uh, this overlying barrage at this point in the game. My guess is that they have a wing leader here. Okay, they don't. Well, that's awesome for us. Let's go ahead and, and uh, deal damage to the A wing. A little bit of lag going on with this right now. No, no, no plus one power. Let's see if they have some sort of uh play here wow they're gonna ecl the fighters for freedom out that's crazy to me huh that's crazy to me ecling out fighters for freedom doesn't make too much sense in this stage of the game i, I in my opinion um the it, it would have i wouldn't have been able to kill um the fighters for freedom anyways but yeah that's that's pretty crazy to me. Okay, Consortium Star Viper is worse than Imperial Interceptor at this point, but we have two targets that we can kill here. We can bounce with Crumb to kill the Fighters for Freedom, or we can ping either one of them. If they wing leader one of them, then we can, well, ideally they wing leader the A-Wing, and we can just Imperial Interceptor away the A-Wing. If they do anything else, it's, it's kind of, I don't know. I mean, I don't even know what, what they're really, uh, what their plan is here. I mean, they played a, a unit and a unit, but they ECL'd out the Fighters for Freedom. Against the Death Star Stormtrooper, it's a little bit crazy to me. I think I want to claim the Death Mark here. Because I would love to double claim this Bounty Hunter's Quarry. And what we could draw is like a... Um... Okay. I'm just going to kill off the A-Wing. There isn't really a reason for me to take uh, some damage here. And we hit a phase three dark trooper. Awesome. That is kind of exactly what I wanted. And now they can't ECL away um, the phase three dark trooper with like a K2. Ooh, and a secondary phase three dark trooper. That's pretty awesome. We can also go tie silencer crumb. Let's just play a crumb here. I could have ECL'd out a phase three dark trooper here, actually. Let's go phase three dark trooper. And now they have to deal with double phase three dark troopers, which is quite amazing for us so now they have to kill one they're not even going to get any damage into our base and then we can overwing barrage away the sabine and that's really nice for us that's really really quite nice for us stolen land speeder kind of meh i think i like the price on your head more because it can kind of set us up for a darth vader relatively quickly um let's just go overwing barrage on phase three dark trooper and kill off sabine Dark Saber is gone. Overwhelming Barrage doing its job. They play a K2. Totally fine. Let's go ahead and deploy Bosk. And I will kill the K2 with Bosk so I can keep my Phase 3 Dark Trooper around. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, get in for some damage here. Open Fire. Pretty nice. Escort Skiff. Could be pretty nice. I'm going to resource this Silencer. Wrecker, huh? Okay, they're going to kill Bosk, I assume. I assume they're going to they're gonna kill Bosk. So we can Escort Skiff Ambush. I think I like Escort Skiff Ambush. And then we Price on your head the Wrecker. And then we just attack the Wrecker and then attack their base. And now we just need to draw. Oh, there you go. Darth Vader is kind of what we were looking for. Wrecker here for them is good. It's not terrible. It's good. It's obviously one of their best cards in the deck, but we do outpace it with Vader's for sure. Like 100%. So I think I'm going to start by bouncing the crumb. I'd rather get the heal in and I'm looking for a better target to ambush with Vader. Okay, Sabine Wren is good enough for me. Let's go ahead and ambush. Awesome, we get a client. That is kind of exactly what we wanted. And now with the client, we're in a stage where we probably are going to be away from our opponent even coming close to, to being able to win the game. Because next turn, we can start passing bounties around. And we have, like, for a cause, great card, by the way. Pretty great card. But um, they're going to have have some amazing options so they revealed cassian wing leader wrecker and metal ceremony and they milled cassian wing leader metal ceremony so they kept a wrecker on top which means that they are going to um they are going to wrecker next turn i think i still play the crumb even though they're gonna wrecker yeah. 
looking. Um, they they just benched that records on top. Um, I was looking for that and we figured it out. I had to look through the resource pile. Sometimes it could be a little bit confusing. Wrecker on top, that's obviously the best card that they could draw. Uh, that alongside Poe are the two best ones. I don't know how much it's going to matter here. It is good. It is good. Don't get me wrong. It is good. But I think what we do is not resource anything because I can go, and this is a little bit tricky. We go price on your head, the wrecker, wreck, open fire, plus salacious crummit. I guess I didn't even necessarily need to do that, huh? So we go bounty on the wrecker. Because this can give a bounty anyway, so we can deal one damage to it. They're going to hit us with R2. They're going to put something on the bottom. Let's bounce it. Hit the, the wrecker. I guess we didn't even need the, open, the, the, the price on your head, realistically. Let's play a crumb. Let's heal one again. Let's deal one to wrecker. Let's play a star viper. And let's open fire the wrecker. Heal five. Awesome. Another Vader. We can resource this price on your head at this point. This is excellent. Again, client makes our game so much more secure. This is the card. And because both a Bounty Hunter's Quarry and Darth Vader can pick it up, this is what makes the game so much, so much more consistent. We're going to go ahead and put a bounty on, on R2 because that's what we're going to kill this turn, almost assuredly. Ooh, they have a Poe Dameron, huh? Well, I take it back. I take it back. Although... No, no, we're going to Vader kill Poe. There isn't really a reason um, for us not to do that. Let's go ahead and get a Death Star Stormtrooper and a Silencer. Let's resolve the ambush, hit the Poe. And then we can follow this up by um, dealing one to R2 and bouncing Crumb to finish the Poe and then attacking for three. So we bounce, kill Poe, play the Crumb, attack for three, and then deal one to R2. And then we pass. Haven't used DCL this game, but uh, I was kind of using it for the Imperial Interceptor, and I've kind of held on to it because, um, you know, I was hoping that we were going to have to ECL something out, but it wasn't relevant in this game. We controlled them exceptionally well, even with fighting through Double Wrecker, uh, po, Dark Saber on Sabine on the turn she flipped. They went A-Wing Fighters for Freedom into Dark Saber Sabine. The only thing I think they messed up on, and this is, I think, could have been the game changer, was the ECL Fighters for Freedom. Doing ECL that early is really weak. There are really three targets that you want to ECL. Generally speaking, there are exceptions, and that's K2, Wrecker, and Poe. If you're not ECLing one of those, it makes it so much weaker. Like, if you think about what happened in that game, they ECL'd out the Fighters for Freedom, and then they killed my, you know, Death Star Stormtrooper. But if they had kept their um, ECL, the turn they flipped Sabine they could have ECL'd out a K2 to kill one of my phase three dark troopers and then hit my other one with Sabine. And I mean, who knows what I would have done with the Death Star Stormtrooper. Maybe I would have gotten in some damage. Maybe I would have traded with something, but that ends up usually getting you more damage in the long run. Or they could have just saved it for ECL Wrecker, ECL Poe, things like that. Um, so maybe if that was changed, it could have been a little bit different, but overall, I mean, the client doing so much work, the bounties coming in, didn't even have to worry about the Imperial Interceptor. Sometimes against the Sabine, if they go like Red 3, Wing Leader, that type of stuff, it can be really dangerous, which is why Imperial Interceptor is so important to kind of keep in the back mind, back of your mind. But overwhelming barrage, things like that also handle it. Anyways, let's go for another one. All right, into another matchup. And this time we're going against Boba Yellow. Wanted to get a couple of other matchups for you all. Um, as I I had said, because you all asked for, okay, well, how about the other type of meta decks? And well, try to get a couple matchups in here, even though we are um showing sabine green mainly i'm gonna go ahead and resource the client and the reinforcement walker and uh, i'm gonna keep this hand mainly because it's really good against the crafty smugglers um they want to go best of three sure um i don't have a sideboard but i mean we could do best of three would i sideboard a lot against this i don't really know exactly what i would sideboard against boba one thing for sure is um I wouldn't play some of the bounties that I'm playing, and I also wouldn't play um, the client, I don't think, because it's actually a little bit tough to really get those claims in. But anyways, 
we're gonna ecl out to the super laser attack just so we can get the ramp get the claim and then hopefully hit something good off this well we hit a crumb i suppose crumb is okay i think i'm just gonna get the death star stormtrooper instead though in case they have a Bodhi. yep that is exactly what i was hoping for um and they did have it so awesome here we get to go and flip bosk then put a bounty on the Bodhi. Okay, this works as well. We're just gonna go ahead and put a bounty on the Gorian Guards. See if they attack Bosk here. Okay, they don't. We're gonna double claim. Boom, we're up to Reinforcement Walker resources. And I mean, this is an amazing start for us. We're gonna be able to play a Reinforcement Walker next turn if we want to. We honestly might not want to though, because Boba can waylay it, and that can be a little bit tricky sometimes, so we do have to be careful of that. I think I want to get rid of this stolen land speeder right now. They play a Boba Fett time. Let's go Reinforcement Walker, and I'm just going to draw some cards here. They went with three resource Boba Fett. Let's go ahead and attack into their base. If they have, like, Fett's armor, that could be something. They can hit the boss, and then... Uh, this is where the new change to, to Boba comes into play. They're actually going to be able to ready up some resources, whereas beforehand they would not have been able to. They have a no good to me dead and a crafty smuggler. Okay, that's totally fine. We have escort skiff to get rid of that Boba, which is going to be pretty relevant. So we go escort skiff, kill Boba. We can play out a phase three dark trooper, which is going to be pretty nice, or a client. So... Relentless Pursuit. Okay, Relentless Pursuit does not work. Um, they're going to play a Cantina Bouncer, huh? Okay, let's just go ahead and play a Rook. Rook's going to be able to kill off units, which is going to be really nice. And, I mean, Cantina Bouncer, Waylays, that's the type of stuff that we're scared of. They're going to claim initiative? Okay, I'm a little bit shocked on that one. Uh... That one is kind of crazy to me. <laughs> I'm a little bit surprised that they claimed initiative instead of getting in for five damage there, but maybe they have another Cantina Bouncer or something, and that's what they're trying to kind of work against. Um. Oh, they're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, that's fine. Let's just go Reinforcement Walker, and I will draw Force Choke. That is an excellent draw. Let's go Force Choke on the Cantina Bouncer, get back a Rook, and then let's claim initiative. And they got another going. Okay, they drew some pretty awesome ones there for sure. But that's okay. We get to go ahead and we have used our ECL already. So let's go ahead and just start off by killing off their Boba. Let's go the client. Let's go. Uh. Death mark on Seventh Fleet. And the hope here is that we they do not have oh man, they get to take our overwhelming barrage. Bazine's pretty good here. Um let's go ahead and deal damage to the seventh fleet. But the thing I was really worried about is like a um that's fire spray. Them drawing the second no good to me dead is really nice for them because Oh, and they have Cantina Bouncer. These are some amazing draws from our opponent. Um, excellent, excellent draws for sure. Let's go ahead and resource this price on your head. They're going to get in for three where you're going to actually just kill the Bazine. And now this has four power, which can be kind of nice. And we are going to definitely go for the bounty. If they have a Fett's Fire Spray, it's, it's kind of too late for us, to be honest. Um, let's go ahead and put a bounty on the Cantina Bouncer. No good to me dead. All right, that is totally fine because we're going to go Darth Vader. And then we get a... Silencer. Oh, actually, we can just get a phase three dark trooper. Do I want that instead? I think I do. 
So we get to kill off the Cantina Bouncer, heal five. And then we get to deal one to this guy, play a Crumb, play a Star Viper, and then pass. And that was a pretty excellent kind of sequence of events. I'm going to keep the price on your head in my hand. It kind of seems counterintuitive because it could just be a resource. But the reason why is because it can potentially give us the option to ping something with... Um, oh, wow. I'm surprised that they didn't attack immediately with this guy. I think I would have. Because now we're just going to claim and we can draw a couple cards. And now with Phase 3 Dark Trooper, we are in a very, very good spot. Okay, they're going to claim initiative. Um, that makes this pretty easy. We're just going to go ahead and give this a bounty. I'm going to bounce the crumb to deal one to here. Kill this, claim the bounty, attack for three into the base, attack for five into the base. Play a silencer, play a stormtrooper, play a crumb, and then play a reinforcement walker, and then heal for three. And I mean, how is the game not completely over? Like, completely over. They had triple no good to be dead. They didn't have a Fett's fire spray, but the triple no good to be dead um, might have been even better because our... Reinforcement Walker would have been able to get in some attacks. It's one of the reasons why Vader is like so, so much more superior than the Reinforcement Walkers because it has Ambush. So, Waylay the Interceptor. All right. It doesn't really matter what they do, to be honest. I guess I will draw this. I mean, they were at six hit damage on our base. They have two cards in hand. We have approximately a million things on the board. It really does not matter. Let's start attacking in. Attacking in. and attack gg awesome that was a pretty close game there was a couple of times where we were really close to losing um they wanted to go for a rematch yeah let's do a best of three uh if i had the option i would have sideboarded but i actually do not have a sideboard i'm building that uh as we speak i usually just go for these in best of one because you can kind of see what the first matchup is there are a lot of decks that are way better against sabine green and boba yellow in best of three where you can swap out all the bad cards like in this matchup the cards i really wouldn't want are well reinforcement walker is pretty bad in this matchup because it takes too long to actually do anything i would rather have malls in this spot because you can just one shot boba which is really really quite important i also would have taken one less force choke for one more open fire probably just take out all the force chokes to be fair uh the everything else is pretty close to what i would want this is a pretty terrible hand we're gonna mulligan this double client yeah not exciting not a great hand but it is a playable hand so i i will go ahead and play it out i will resource both clients really don't want to be seeing a double client here at the start of the game let's go stolen lance let's just play a silencer here and let's pass Okay, stolen land speeder. Probably going to go into the resource pile at this point. Let's play a super laser tech. Um, let's attack in for three. And let's pass. Okay, bounty hunter's quarry is quite nice. So here, I'm going to get rid of this open fire. Because I can go phase three dark trooper, bounty hunter's quarry, flip boss, double acclaim. If they don't have a waylay. Okay, they have a waylay, but that's okay. I think what we do is just go ahead and play a super laser tech. Surprise strike into the base. Okay, that works perfectly. Because what we can do is put a bounty hunter's quarry, ping it with Bosk, and then kill it with silencer. Boom. Claim. What do we get? Phase three dark trooper. Looks great. And let's pass. All right, here, getting put the re, uh, silencer into the resource pile. And I'm curious on what they're going to be doing here. We can flip Bosk. They're going to Cunning. Are they going to bounce plus four, plus oh? Cunning's good. I'm curious what they're going to pick. My guess would be bounce the phase three Dark Trooper, give plus four, plus oh. They're going to return Exhaust. Hmm. I don't think that's that's what you want to do. I think you want to bounce phase three and buff. Yeah, okay, they're going to buff and... Oh, and exhaust. Mm, I don't know if I like that one either because... 
now they have one resource which means they don't really have many other things to do and they have to hit the phase three dark trooper with a smuggler i would have gone bounce um with the uh with the cunning because what i can do here also is deal five to boba fett and deal one to the crafty smuggler now their crafty smuggler will get killed and now they're not even going to be able to ready the resources because they didn't bounce with the cunning so now they're going to be stuck on one resources instead of potentially four And now they, I mean, they could attack with Boba, I suppose. Yeah, they're going to attack with Boba, um, but they're not going to be able to get the resources ready. And I'm just going to hit their base here. See if they decide to hit my Bosk. Nope, they're going to hit their base. I think that's correct. Bounty Hunter's Quarry. Nice. Um, here, I'm just going to go ahead and hit their Crafty Smugs and... The thing that I'm scared of would be a um, a Fett's Fire Spray. That would be the thing that I do not want to see. Okay, they have a Fett's Fire Spray. Let's go Darth Vader. Let's grab a Phase 3 Dark Trooper. And here, what do we have to have? Um, well, the Consortium Star Viper actually keeps us alive <laughs> with the ECL here. Let's go ECL Star Viper. And let's hope they don't have a surprise strike or a secondary Fetz Fire Spray. So that's going to keep us alive. If they had surprise strike, they would have just surprise struck. Oh, they're going to go cunning. Uh, well, we're going to open fire. Wow. Really nice one for us. Kill, attack, 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 and then we pass. Reinforcement Walker keeps us alive, and what a comeback for our deck. I think our opponent did the right play. I think you should go for Cunning. Like, you have to make me have it. They had Double Cunning this game, and we actually beat them. But double Cunning Fets Fire Spray. Like, that is a really solid hand. I think they messed up on the turn that uh, they could have bounced, because they could have bounced and readied up additional resources. I don't know what's in the hand, their hand, but they had a secondary Cunning, which means they might have been able to Cunning again, which is kind of crazy. Um, here, let's just attack with Bosk into their base and then attack with Vader into their base. And that's going to be GG. So GG didn't even sideboard, <laughs> even though, um, you know, that would have been something, but look at that two matches against Boba Yellow and two wins against Boba Yellow, which is kind of crazy. Let's do one more and uh, then we'll leave it off at there. All right, and I am back for the last matchup. I actually just played a matchup against this guy with the Bobby Yellow, but we also played one when he was playing Sabine, but my recording got messed up. I lost that one pretty rough, actually. Um, so there you go. We lost one against Sabine Green that I definitely did not make any mistakes in like the first time. This is a pretty god-awful hand. <laughs> um, it was also because I had a pretty bad hand um, because I had... Well, I had a triple Death Star Stormtrooper hand, but then I mulliganed it because I don't think that's actually that great. Um, especially when all the rest of our hand was pretty mediocre. And well, we ended up with an even worse hand. So here I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this open fire and the force choke. It's a little bit unfortunate that I have to get rid of such powerful cards, but the Imperial Interceptor just works so well if they go into space. And it looks like that's what they're going to be doing. And so um this seems like a really nice uh situation for us. Star Viper is gonna be great if we ECL it out, potentially. We could also just keep our ECL for an ECL interceptor after they wing leader it, which is very, very possible. Fleet Lieutenant, huh? Okay. Um, let's just deal a damage to the A-Wing. They activated. Let's go phase three Dark Trooper. Let's attack. Don't really see a reason to bounce it quite yet. Pure Interceptor looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and resource this Death Star Stormtrooper. If they have like a wing leader, it's totally fine because we ECL the Interceptor and we deal three and then we get a client. Awesome. And then we kill the wing leader. Perfect setup. Absolutely perfect setup. Um, let's just go ahead and attack for one. They're probably going to get down a Sabine. And then hopefully we get to do some nonsense. Okay, they're going to Heroic Resolve. Get in for four. 
still still a nice recovery from them i mean they had a wing fleet lieutenant wing leader heroic resolve sabine like they've used every resource every turn so very very powerful start for them for sure it's going to give a bounty to sabine here they're going to defeat it get in for approximately a million damage remember we can double claim this bounty off of bosk that's a four cause, and I think we got this game absolutely wrapped up at this point. Because we get to go flip Bosk, double claim this, heal 10. And then we get to um, play out a Consortium Star Viper and a TIE Silencer. So we have space cover, we have ground covered, and that heal 10 was absolutely fantastic. Now we have a death mark, which also could potentially be double claimed here. Although I'm very much incentivized to double claim a, um, okay. They're going to ECL out of Poe Dameron, probably kill Bosk is my guess. Although they might have to kill clients because clients going to heal for so, so, so much. Not to mention if they attack Bosk, then we can just kind of finish off Poe Dameron with the client. So I think they're in a little bit of trouble here. They're going to, yep, they're going to attack the client. And, yep, they're going to kill the client. Okay, so that's kind of what I expected. Uh, let's go ahead and play out a Rook. And if they want to deal one to each of us, I'm just going to claim initiative. Cool. I want to keep Bosk around. So I'm going to kill Podamrin with the Rook. And if they go Wrecker, I will claim initiative yet again. Okay. Um, let's claim initiative. Kill their Wrecker. Claiming initiative is kind of important because of the Star Viper as well. Escort Skiff, Force Choke can probably go into the resource pile. Kill Wrecker. That's a K2. Okay, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Let's attack with Star Viper. Heal 2. That's a Heroic Resolve. Okay. Um, we could still kill that. Let's death mark the K2. Let's deal one to K2. Let's escort skiff, kill the K2. Let's bounce so that we can just um, plus one HP. Another crumb seems okay. Not that exciting. Price on your head's pretty meh here, but I'm going to keep it anyways because it's a way to give bounties away. I think I'm just going to get rid of the crumb. Another Wrecker, huh? All right, another Wrecker is real good. And this is why I kept the price on your head. Because I might be able to price on your head this guy. And then deal one. And then overrolling barrage. Hit this guy for five. Attack and attack. And then we pass. Look at that. Price on your head was very important to keep. And they have a Fleet Lieutenant. We attack with Star Viper. And they have a Heroic Resolve. And we attack with a Silencer. Wow, GG. They absolutely crushed me in the first game, and we not necessarily crushed them. I mean, they had Podamarin, Wrecker Wrecker. They had the they had amazing start. That's kind of like one of your ideal starts. You go A Wing, Fleet Lieutenant, then you have a double play. Um, they said last one. You know what? I said it was gonna be the last one, and uh, we'll do one more. Why not do one final matchup? Now, this is a spot where I will actually keep the um the stolen land speeder because what i could do is go stolen land speeder plus bounty hunters quarry um so i'm gonna keep this even though the rest of the hands kind of whatever like the client paying for five is not great darth vader it can be good but not necessarily here i'm gonna resource the reinforcement walker and the darth vader and then we're gonna go stolen land speeder put a bounty hunters quarry on the stolen land speeder deal one here and then pass. I think they should have they should have dealt, dealt one to each person with the Sabine uh, trigger. They know I have to deal one to the stolen land speeder when I play it. Um, here, let's get rid of the, one of these phase three dark troopers. Um, let's actually play a phase three dark trooper so we can absorb this damage here. Wing leader, huh? All right, let's deal damage to the stolen land speeder. Let's uh, play the stolen land speeder. And ooh, awesome, we get the client. Perfect. That was exceptional. Claim initiative. And now, 
what we can do is, ooh, super laser technician, price in your head. I like it. What I'm going to do is kill the battlefield marine. <laughs> They're like the client is OP against me. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's what the deck is, guys. Um, let's kill the battlefield marine. Let's just straight up trade. Now we can put a bounty on the wing leader and then ping it with Bosk. Let's put a bounty on wing leader. Let's deal one. They should have dealt us some damage with the uh, wing leader for sure. Let's go price on your head on the Sabine. And let's claim initiative. We're not out of the woods yet. We do need some cards here to help us out. No doubt in my mind. Are we not quite there yet? Um, but we do have a chance. We definitely have a chance. Let's start off by playing a tie silencer. If they have ECL Podamron, they can definitely ECL Podamron. That is definitely not great for us. But also if we flip Bosk, okay, so they have ECL Podamron. Regardless, if we had put a bounty on something, they probably would have killed my Bosk. So like, it's kind of like, okay, what are we gonna do? No matter what, we're kind of brutalized. Okay, they're gonna discard to deal two to my base, kill the client. Oh, they're gonna make us discard everything, huh? Uh, let's get rid of this Death Star Stormtrooper. Oh, they're gonna defeat the upgrade, huh? All right, let's deploy Bosk. Let's hit their Sabine. Now let's claim initiative. Okay, we have Crumb, we have the client. Here, I think we just have to kill the Podamron. Let's ECL out the Crumb. Kill the Sabine. Let's play the client. And I mean, we still have a chance. It is it is a tricky one. This is definitely not an easy game by any means. They're going to claim initiative. And we're going to pass. Okay, so they don't have anything in hand, it looks like. Stolen land speeder, bounty hunter's quarry, wing leader, huh? Ooh, wing leader's a good one. Although, although we will be able to claim the bounty over on um, wing leader. So that's going to heal us for five. So that's pretty nice. They have another four cause. That would be pretty scary. Okay, they've dealt us one. Let's bounce this to deal one here. Let's go attack. Let's play a Bounty Hunter's Core on K2. Let's play Salacious Crumb. Let's pass. Still no big heavy hitters yet. Still no big heavy hitters. Hit for six. We can deal one, two. Not quite enough, huh? We just have to claim initiative. There's not really many other things that we can do. All right, they played another K2 and they won. All right, pretty close one, pretty close one. The The early game was not bad, but it was uh, our draws kind of set us up for a little bit of failure. So out of the games that we played, well, we'll talk about that in just a moment, but we we didn't end up actually losing this technically best of three, although we didn't sideboard in it um, against our opponent here. They played pretty well. Our initial hand was not bad. The stolen land speeder plus bounty hunter's quarry is not bad. We got the client, which is also pretty good. But the problem was that we kind of fizzled out. We drew, well, multiple stolen land speeders, all three stolen land speeders when we started off with two. And um, we didn't really draw into anything special. Like we drew our other Death Star Stormtrooper. We drew, you know, um, the Star Viper, which has kind of lost its lost its luster at that point. There was, I think, a situation where I could have played this thing a little, like I could have put a bounty on the client instead of attacking first or dealing with damage first. I think of one of the turns, um, but that one was a little, potentially a little bit awkward. I think it was the turn where I could have put a bounty on Sabine, but they defeated it with Poe Dameron. Um, and then they dealt two to the client to get rid of the shield and then ambushed it. So if I started with 
bountying the Sabina went out of a chance. Anyways, pretty awesome matchup here at the end. That was a cool one. Um, and they just got us completely wrecked with the uh, wing leader on K2 to finish us off. But anyways, that was that. Let's talk about the final thoughts on boss green. All right, so what did we learn with boss green, guys? Well, the big thing is this is a different build of boss green. You might have seen boss green before, and Bounty Hunter's Quarry is a card that you want to run in boss green no matter what. Stolen Land Speeders, Crumbs, Death Star Stormtroopers, you know, Super Laser Attacks, Darth Vader's. These are all kind of standard. Like, none of that's different. The different part about this is the Force Chokes and the Client. This is kind of like the big game changer against some of the aggro matchups. Force Choke is really excellent against Sabine. It really hard prevents a lot of damage because you can just one-shot Sabine. You can clear some of the earlier um, units, which is really important. Same thing goes with Open Fire. And the Bounty Hunter's Quarry, there are so many unique units, less so in Boba Yellow, but even something on a Bodhi, that also counts. But if you're fighting against Sabine, they go Ketsuonyo, they go, um, well, Ketsuonyo is kind of a little bit tricky, but they go like Sabine Ren, they can go, you know, Cassians, they have R2s, you know, all these different cards that, have unique in their name or at least unique cards you can search the top 10 cards and mind you it's not like we have to get the client remember we have star vipers which are great in the sabine matchup we have facely dark troopers which are great in the sabine matchup we have crumbs death star storm troopers which are reasonable silencer reasonable super laser tech reasonable but if you do hit the client it really helps you out in these games and then you have kind of a decent amount of cards to to kind of finish out the game ECL in some games it was really relevant if you ECL out super imperial interceptor it can be like game changing if you ECL out rook on a big target it can be game changing ECLing out a super laser tech can be game changing it's really those that make ECL great and in some games it's a little bit weaker so depending on the matchup um definitely definitely you can uh you could even put I'm not even I'm not even sure the rules on this in an official tournament setting but I believe you should be able to put a 30 HP base in your sideboard and depending on the matchup, you can shift that out, um, which is kind of funny. Against Sabine Green, if they're running a little bit more space units, ECLing out Interceptors are really important. And if they have a little bit more big units like Pose and Wreckers, ECLing out Rook could be nice. But if you're against, you know, no, not many space units or you're playing a different version of Sabine, then maybe the 30 HP base is better. Just depends on the matchup, uh, depending on like the build of Sabine Green. So that can be kind of interesting. But overall, this isn't too far away from what you would build in boss screen generally. Like if I was playing boss screen, I normally wouldn't run the force chokes and I wouldn't run the clients. Those six cards would be replaced and I would be running an additional escort skiff. I would be running Maul, two copies of Maul and, um, or a copy of Maul and two copies of Crate Dragon is what the difference would be. But Darth Vader, we're running the full three copies of because it can hit the client so you might want to if you wanted to go um get the malls in there you could trim a copy of darth vader it does one shot leaders in a lot of situations but in this build darth vader is so important because it can hit the client and a lot of the games that you saw was we got the darth vader down around the same time that wrecker was coming down and the reason why client's still important is because they could still burn you out there are a lot of situations where you're not really safe unless you have something like the client to make you recover all the HP that you lost in a couple of turns. But hopefully you all enjoyed the little secret tech with the client and uh, Darth Vader and Bounty Hunter Quarry. It was really sweet and I really enjoyed this list. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all for the next one.